वेलकम बैक टू लिटरेचर गाइड टूडेज वीडियो इज अबाउट द जॉर्जियन पोएट्री एंड द इमेजिस्ट मूवमेंट इन इंग्लिश लिटरेचर एस्पेशली इन इंग्लिश पोएट्री आई हैव कवर्ड यूजफुल इंफॉर्मेशन फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स हु हैव बीन टेकिंग द कॉम्पिटिटिव एग्जाम्स सच एज द नेट एंड सेट एग्जाम्स conducted by the UGC India the georgian poets were highly inspired by the great romantic poets such as william blake william wordsworth and samuel taylor coleridge the georgian poets depicted scenes of english countryside through their poetry with simplicity and naturalness the imagist school of poetry was influenced by the aesthetic doctrines propounded by thomas ernest hume according to t hume poetry should restrict itself to the world pursued by the senses and it should be presented with the help of concrete and concise images this group of imagist poets comprised some renowned writers such as richard aldington his wife hilda dolittle t s eliot ezra pound and james joyce i have tried my level best to give you useful information through this video I have already produced many videos on English poetry, English drama and novel. You can watch all these videos if you visit this channel Literature Guide. If you really like the videos produced by this channel, do like and subscribe Literature Guide. I don't want to waste your time. Let's dive into the video and enjoy the video. Georgian Poets and Imagist Movement The Georgian poetry appeared on the literary scene between 1910 and 1922. It was a group of poets, but in no wise a school. They did not profess any doctrine. The term Georgian poetry refers to a body of poetry composed in the reign of King George V. Edward Marsh edited the five anthologies as Georgian poetry which appeared between 1912 and 1922 from the poetry bookshop of Harold Monroe. Harold Monroe's The Poetry Bookshop not only published poetry but also sold books. The Georgian poets had differences and even oppositions, but they had some similarities and family likeness in their works. The Georgian group comprised some poets such as John Macefield, Rupert Brooke, John Drinkwater, Harold Monroe, James Elroy Flecker, Edward Marsh, Ralph Hodgson, William Henry Davis, Edmund Blunden, Walter de la Mare, Lascelles Abercrombie, Gordon Bottomley, Isaac Rosenberg, Edward Thomas, Edward Shanks, John C. Squire, John Freeman, and Wilfred Wilson Gibson. D. H. Lawrence also produced some poems for this group of poets. The Georgian poets depicted the scenes of English countryside focusing on simple musical and pictorial effects. These poets displayed great originality and their notion of poetry in their poetry. They reflected naturalness, simplicity and realism through their works. Though the Georgian poets were inspired by the great Romantic poets like William Wordsworth and William Blake, they were free from Blake's mysticism. They really adhered to the qualities of the pantheism of the Romantic poets and continued to tread on the way of new Romanticism. The reader once more can hear the call of back to nature in Georgian poetry. Though these poets had unique temper of their age, they are distinguished by the special characteristics of their own. According to Robert Graves, the Georgian poets composed poems highly traditional in form and they handled uncontroversial subjects of rural and domestic life. 
The Georgian poets make the reader recall the past glory and charm of artistic life which has elapsed since William Wordsworth's age. The Georgian poetry was a reaction against Victorianism and the poetry of the 90s. It discarded all formerly religious and philosophic themes of the Victorian poetry. It also avoided sad, wicked and café table subjects of the poetry of the 90s of the decadence. It was pantheistic rather than aesthetic in nature. It detested the archaistic diction and pomposities of style. The Georgian poetry was contemporary with the imagist poetry but both were based on different principles. John Masefield is probably the central figure of the Georgian group of poets. His poems are pregnant with lucidity of expression and vivid description which arrest the attention of the reader. The variety of his rhythms and ease and direct energy of his style acquired for him special niche in the world of poetry. John Macefield produced ballads and poems in 1910 which comprised his famous poem Cargoes. His narrative poem The Everlasting Marcy appeared in 1911, and his poem Renard the Fox was set in the countryside. Macefield's poetry is tinged with variety, desolation and wildness of the sea. Rupert Brooke produced a fine collection of poems Tiara Tahiti and other poems which deals with his affair with a woman in Tahiti. Brooke's famous five poems are war sonnets which appeared in new numbers in 1914. Most of Edward Thomas's poetry appeared posthumously. A few of his poems were published under the fictitious name Edward Easterway. Like Robert Frost, Edward Thomas advocated use of colloquial speech rhythms and natural diction in poetry. Despite the hard times and bitter experience of the World War, nature poems were also appreciated and captured attention of reading public. Edward Thomas depicted the English countryside scenes in his famous poems As the Team's Head Brass and Adelstrup. The poem As the Team's Head Brass celebrates the service of soldiers and farmers for their motherland. His poem Adelstrup deals with the nostalgic memories of the past era which is lost. It also describes an incident of stopping of a train at a deserted railway station in the Gloucestershire village of Adelstrup. William Henry Davis's famous poem Leisure gives an account of his childhood response to the natural around him. His love poems hold the same charm as his nature lyrics. W. H. Davis has expressed his sheer joy and enjoyment in the company of nature in his lyrics. His lyrics make the reader recall Wordsworth's nature poems. The lyrics are written in simple style with pictorial description of nature. His poetry affirms rural and countryside values. Walter de la Mare displayed some qualities of William Blake and Samuel Taylor Coleridge in his poetry. Walter de la Mare's first collection of poems The Listeners appeared in 1912 which established him as a writer of poems. He also composed poems Peacock Pie in 1913 for children. It deals with mystery and childhood littleness in a melancholic tone. The melodious music of Shelley and lavishness of John Keats can be observed in the poems of Harold Edward Monroe. He founded Poetry Bookshop in 1913 to publish and promote poetry readings. Most of the Georgian poetry appeared in Poetry Bookshop edited by Edward Marsh. Harold Monroe's famous poems Bitter Sanctuary and Milk for the Cat became famous and they appeared in many anthologies. Wilfred Wilson Gibson depicted life of the rural rustics in a symbolic language which feelings of pity. He depicted scenery of northern rural life through his poetry and his experience in the First World War has been recorded in his poem Breakfast. Like Wordsworth, John Drinkwater perceived the presence of God as a friendly and kindly figure. His collection of poetry includes Swords and Plowshares, Olten Pools, Tides and Summer Harvest. James Elroy Flecker had great fascination of the East, he produced some fantastic romantic lyrics. His famous collection of poems is The Golden Journey to Samarkand published in 1913. Ralph Hodgson's most famous poem A Song of Honor that established him as a writer that appeared in a collection of poems in 1917. Edmund Blunden, 
one of the Georgian poets, took delight in depicting the sights, sounds, smells and countryside scenes through his poetry. The readers can find Shelleyan lucidity of expression and his keen observation in his poetry. His artistic use of archaic words arouses interest in the readers. His collection of poems Shells by a Stream contains finest lyrics. In addition to this, Edmund Blunden has also produced works such as Pastorals, The Wagoner and Other Poems, Choice and Chance, and After the Bombing. Most of the Georgian poets had gone through the bitter experiences of the First World War and some of them even lost their lives in the war. It is important to note that Edward Thomas, Rupert Brooke, and Wilfred Owen dies in First World War. Like these poets, a great exponent of the Imagist movement, Thomas Ernest Hume also died during the war. The quest for simplicity and reality, love of natural beauty and adherence to the forms and techniques of traditional English poetry made the Georgian poetry really noteworthy. The Imagist movement was based on the aesthetic doctrines of Thomas Ernest Hume. The term Imagism was coined by Hilda Doolittle and Ezra Pound. The seeds of the Imagist poetry had already been sown in the lectures of T. Hume before the first collection of Georgian poetry appeared in 1912. T. Hume despised the looseness of texture of Georgian poetry. According to Hume, poetry should restrict itself to the world perceived by the senses. It should make use of concrete and concise images in detail and with precision. He also advocated use of verse libre due to its affinity with everyday speech. The Imagist poetry had a mouthpiece in the periodical The Egoist which appeared in 1914. Ezra Pound edited an anthology of Imagist poems called De Magists which contained poems by Richard Aldington, Ezra Pound, James Joyce, and Hilda Doolittle in the same year. The poetry of D. H. Lawrence, Ford Maddox Ford, Amy Lowell, John Gould Fletcher, William Carlos Williams, and Marianne Moores introduced in the following three anthologies called Some Imagist Poets between 1915 and 1917. The final collection of the Imagist School of Poetry appeared as Imagist Anthology in 1930. The School of Imagist Poetry comprised some renowned poets such as Richard Aldington, his wife Hilda Doolittle, Ezra Pond, Ford Maddox Ford, William Carlos Williams, James Joyce, Marianne Moore, Amy Lowell, John Gould Fletcher, D. H. Lawrence, and T. S. Eliot. The Imagist poets employed sequence of concise and concrete images in order to get brilliant and clear effect. They ignored the soft and dreamy vagueness of Miltonic rhetoric of the 19th century. They tried to reproduce poetic effects of the ancient Greek and Japanese poetry. The Japanese poetic form haiku influenced these poets to great extent in which feelings are implied by natural images rather than directly expressed. The Imagist poets despised ornamentation and employed exact and apt words. They made use of concrete and precise images and neglected use of vague and abstract signs and symbols. The Imagist poets put much stress on the principle of liberty which could be obtained by the irregular rhythms of verse libre. They were different from the Symbolist poets. Ezra Pound stated that where the Symbolists had dealt in association by employing illusions and allegory, the Imagist's poets made use of images like the signs in algebra. The Imagist poets devised new rhythms and avoided imitating the old rhythm. The Imagist poetry revolted against the contemporary English poetry for its mechanical quality of rhythm. Though the Imagist poetry could not survive long due to the use of concise images and verse libre which made it obscure, it has left its imprints on the modern poetry. This can be observed in T.S. Eliot's famous poems The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock and Portrait of a Lady. The readers can find a new tone of voice, and subtle use of irony along with impressive style. A sentimentality of thought is the only common feature of the Georgian poets and Imagist poets which brings them together. T.S. Eliot and Ezra Pound did not adhere to a firm style of writing. 
They made many experiments in their style and were frequently refining their style. Their poetry reflects the subconscious states with classical form. They tried to emancipate the imagist poetry from the bondage of sentimentality and softness of the earlier imagist poets. According to Richard Aldington, the imagist poets were a group of ardent Hellenists who pursued interesting experiments in verse libre. The imagist poetry focused on the clarity and concentration of the classic Greek epigram and Chinese lyric which were products of a highly civilized society of that time. The imagist poets could not attain that due to different conditions of 20th century England. How is the video? I hope you liked the video. I have produced many videos for you on this particular channel literature guide. If you really like the videos produced by this channel, do like and subscribe literature guide so that this channel will continue producing useful videos and content for you in future also. I will meet you soon with a new topic on English literature. Meet you. Please subscribe literature guide.